Hey, what's up you guys? This is Rob from A Gay Guy Plays, and today on the Stand Spotlight, it's all about keeping your rhythm when we take a look at Tempo Royale. Okay, so Tempo Royale is the newest great heavy bladed axe sword. I don't even know what they call this category anymore, but it's the new stance for those. It's currently only available during the first phase of the Phoenix Intercept Tactical Alert. Its movesets primarily consist of very fluid horizontal cleaves that excel at clearing crowds and can easily be chained into additional combos. Now, quick disclaimer before anyone pops off in the comments. I usually use a Berserker build on my Sindoh Prime, however, I found that with the attack speed it's really hard to make out the combos, so I kept it at a regular pace for the camera. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to step it. Its first combo, Majestic Abandon, uses 4 basic attacks to open with an overhead backhanded spinning slash, into a vertical downward strike, quickly reversing into a backhanded upward slash, and closes with what feels like a slow-mo horizontal slice. Now, this combo is fairly basic. It doesn't have too much forward momentum, and the first two swings can be used while you have your primary or secondary equipped. One thing that I will say is that the animations do keep you on the slower side. However, if you find yourself needing to chase something down, you can always combo into something with a bit of forward momentum after the first and second attack animation. The only thing left to say is that very first opening attack is fan freaking tastic. It's got an amazing spinning cleave that can multi-hit, and while it does have a bit of animation time, it's one of my favorites. Resplendent Comma, its second combo, is triggered by using a 2 pause 3. It follows the first two strikes of the basic combo, with a spinning forward dash that ends in a downward rotating strike, then is followed with what looks like a horizontal swat into another spinning slice and is punctuated with a heavy downward gash. Now honestly, this one is great for chasing or charging from one group into the next. The final gash on the combo is awesome for its AoE knockdown, and while it might not finish the job every time, it opens up a lot of opportunities for ground finishers. Its third combo is August Maisto. It uses a 1 block 3 to follow the first basic swing with a half spin that launches you forward into a horizontal leaping ground slam, which is quickly followed by an ascending slice into a full body swing that leads into a roundhouse kick and finishes with one final slash. Now holy hell this combo is ridiculously easy to pull off and is fantastic when you've got enemies lined up. That spinning launch is great for plowing through a crowd and the knockdown is fantastic to keep them pinned down. If you're good at re-aiming you can turn right back around and finish off anything that didn't die with a roundhouse kick to the face. I don't know what it is but non-brawling or sparring weapon combos that contain surprise kicks always entertain the shit out of me. Its fourth and final combo, Bold Reprise, uses a 2 back 1 to follow the first two swings of the basic combo with yet another slow mo leap that ends in a devastating downward slam. Now, the wind up, hang time, and animation lock on that finishing attack is pretty painful when you don't have Berserker stacks running. However, to compensate for it, it does have an estimated 5 times damage multiplier, which it needs due to the amount of time that it leaves you vulnerable. Now, all of that aside, can I just say that I love the fact that this combo exists. It's literally one single button combo that finishes the moveset. Sometimes we don't need a full on combo, we just need one big chop to finish the job. Again, much like the rest of the ground slams, if you manage to miss connecting this one, the AoE knockdown on it does leave enemies open for a ground finisher. So all in all, I must say that I love the living daylights out of Temple Royale. While I do really like its two predecessors, let's face it, Rending Crane is great at getting headshots, but it reuses a lot of its animations. And while Cleaving Whirlwind rocks the iconic spin to win, it tends to be a bit of a one-trick pony. Temple Royale, on the other hand, has a lot of variation, some really nice mobility, and a bevy of awesome knockdowns. The one thing that I will say is the combos do tend to end slightly awkwardly. It almost feels as if they were designed for the combos to be continuously chained together, which by no means is a bad thing. Now, this is definitely my winner for the bunch, but for those of you who have used all three, let me know which one wins it for you in the comments below. So, thank you all for watching another episode of The Stand Spotlight. Be sure to check out my previous videos on the other great sword, axe, bladed, whatever stances, as well as the newest addition to the throwing stance roster, Astral Twilight. Now, don't forget to do all the things that I ask you to do at the end of every one of these, and as always, stay tuned for more amazing blows here at A Gay Guy Plays. Don't lie, that had to have made you feel just a little bit good on the inside.